be 60. And that's why when we first heard yesterday about a pro wrestler and his family found dead, we decided we wouldn't cover it. Then we started digging and learned the details of what happened, how the former wrestling champion Chris Benoit reportedly strangled his wife, smothered his seven-year-old son, and then hanged himself. We also learned that police found drugs and steroids in the home. There was more. We also uncovered a brutal reality of wrestling and how this, tra this tragedy is really just the latest in a series of tragedies and deaths to shake the profession. That's when we decided this was a story we couldn't possibly ignore. CNN's David Mattingly has details. Before the 40-year-old pro wrestler Chris Benoit murdered his family and took his own life, he was at the top of a profession where stars seemed to die young. A 2004 investigation by USA Today determined that professional wrestlers are 20 times more likely to die before age 45 than professional football players. At least 27 active or retired pro wrestlers have reportedly died just since 1995. Two were suicides, five died from heart disease, and four from drug use. Me being a wrestler, I think if you make it to 45, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> The pro wrestler known as Brian Christopher is the son of wrestling legend Jerry Lawler. He says 11 of his wrestling friends have died. Most, he suspects, were victims of a punishing lifestyle. Well, at wrestling, there is no off-season. It's, it's constant go, always go, go, go. Wrestle, you know, and be prepared to lace up your boots and wrestle the next night. I don't care if you've got uh, a cracked rib and a broken finger. You know, you better be able to uh, walk down that aisle and perform the next night. In his biography on the World Wrestling Entertainment website, Benoit was reported as saying, wrestling has consumed my life, and it defines a lot of who I am as a person. Benoit was once arrested in Georgia for DUI. He had no other criminal record. But Georgia authorities say they found a lot of prescription medication in the Benoit home, including anabolic steroids. Tests to determine what drugs, if any, were in Benoit's body will take weeks. Nicknamed the rabid Wolverine and the Canadian Crippler, Chris Benoit starred on a stage steeped in drama and violence. But what authorities found in his home proved to be more tragic and brutal than anything inside the ring. David Mattingly, CNN. New York. As you just heard, pro wrestler Brian Christopher says he knew several wrestlers who've died in recent years, most he says from a punishing lifestyle. Brian joins me now. Brian, thanks for being with us. You, you knew Chris Benoit for 15 years. What kind of guy was he in the ring and out? Oh, well, what kind of guy he was? He was very intense. Uh, you know, when you said, I heard that you said wrestling had, had uh, consumed his life, that was uh, one of the things about Chris was uh, he was always thinking about wrestling. He was thinking about his opponent that night. You know, um, when you're talking to him in the locker room, he, he's the type of guy that would drop down and, and start doing 25 push-ups. You know, he, um, wrestling had consumed his life, and, and I think it was uh, a little bit to do with his size. He was uh, really, really concerned about his size. He wanted to always, uh, um, you know, he wasn't the tallest of individuals, so he would always want to want to bulk up and and uh, and and be the size of guy that could compete in the main event type of matches. Well, and uh, police say they they found steroids and other pres a lot of prescription drugs in his home. Do you think that drug use, that desire to bulk up, had anything to do w with his death, or did it affect his lifestyle? Well, also now. Uh, I can also say you need to check those bottles and see the expiration date, uh, you know, because recently they have, they have cracked down. I can personally tell you that they have cracked down on steroid use, uh, drug use, you know, of all types. Uh, last time I went to an event, I'm not currently under contract with, uh, with any major wrestling organization right now, but uh, last time I went to an event, you know, a lot of wrestlers came running up to me and said, oh, man. You know, we get uh, we get random drug drug tested. You know, worse than worse than you hear about baseball and football players nowadays. There, there is though a, a constant need to to keep size. I mean, whether it's Eric Chris Benoit or I mean the people who really succeed. I mean, it, it, some of the sizes of these guys it, it, they're they're enormous. I mean, how whether it's in the past or now, how prevalent do you think steroid use has been? In the past, <laughs> well, I've, I've been wrestling 19 years. And I grew up, uh, grew up in wrestling, so I've seen just about everything. You know, this is the only job I've ever had, and um, 
and steroid use, I would say, when you say in the past, I would say maybe uh, 12 years ago, 10 years ago, it, it was it was pretty bad. Um, but you know, the uh, the drug policies were were a little different now. Now with uh, with all the steroid talk in baseball and uh, and things like that. Um, most of them have have uh, have uh, cracked down on it, and and now it's not. It's not. I, I was pulled off the side, and also to, also told it's not about the size anymore. You know, they they're 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 not. Uh, they they're they're making sure that most of the wrestlers uh, uh, live a good lifestyle and and stay away from steroids it, and things like that. It is stunning. You know, this USA Today article is saying that tw you, you have, that pro wrestlers are, are 20 percent more likely to die before the age of 45 than pro football players what is the lifestyle like I mean how difficult is it it's a tough it's a, it's, it's, a, it's an unbelievable lifestyle it takes a, a very unique individual to become a pro professional wrestler but those uh, those articles that you're reading also uh, uh, I couldn't tell you how many of those those wrestlers were retired you know I heard you heard you run the little piece of me saying if you live to be 45 in the wrestling business you're doing good what I meant was if you're if you're if you live to be 45 years old and still competing in wrestling, you're doing very good. You know, uh, uh, you know you've lost wrestling. Wrestl you, you said you lost 11 friends from from wrestling uh, that you know about. That, that's a lot for for you know people under the age of 45 for young people. That is a lot, but but I have a lot of friends. Uh, I, w I say that all 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 wrestlers in general are my friend because we we uh, we view wrestling once you get to a certain point as uh, as a as a family uh, relationship with everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know um, I've I've known a lot of wrestlers, but but some like Owen Hart, you know, his death was uh, uh, certainly not not anything to do with drugs or right. or, or steroids. Uh, now I know that. Um, a lot, a lot of a lot of the folks who have died uh, have died from heart disease or in a large heart, uh, which which is certainly uncommon for for someone young. We're out of time, but Brian, I appreciate you being on. Brian Christopher uh, talking about Chris Alrighty. Benoit. Thanks so much, Brian. If okay. there is a dark side of pro wrestling, there is also a lot of dollars, a lot of dollars to to the uh, to the the sport. Here's the raw data. Fiscal year 2006, that's through April, the WWE reported revenues of $400 million. Their audience is massive. An estimated 20 million per week watch professional wrestling on TV and in sports arenas. A massive audience indeed.